Hey guys, Mel the Train Tutor here again with another hill tutorial for you. And in this hill tutorial, we're going to be looking at sort of large display hills. Now, what are large display hills? Well, basically, they're the large ones that you see at the displays at war game shows. We're, we're very much bored entering into sort of the railway guys' territory, yeah, with their large mountain backdrops. Okay, now these sort of things aren't really suitable for home gaming, they aren't really suitable for uh, club gaming unless you've got a lot of storage space because, you know, they do take up large chunks of the board, they make a lot of the board redundant it, for the most day, and on top of that, you know, they take up a lot of space to store. Yeah, but for display tables, they're eye catchers. Now we've got the infamous art board here. It's been a hell of a, a challenge to get back to on warp and all sorts of interesting things, but I'll tell you about that on a live show. So, large display boards, uh, display hills. You can have them based and then place them on the board, which is a little bit easier. In this case, yeah, uh, I'm going to be building them directly on the board. And I'm going to be working on two, because we've got the main art board there, which the art will sit on. And then we've got the two what you call the flanking boards, which will have the hills on. Now, to actually, make the, to actually make it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use expanded polystyrene yeah, with a plaster bandage covering, and it's going to be backed and sided with 3mm MDF. Okay? And I'm going to take you through the reasons why I'm doing various bits and bobs as we do it. So that's the basic idea. Yeah? We're going to be doing a, a, quite a reasonable slope, to be perfectly honest. Yeah? It's going to be going up about 9 inches high, which should be about there. Uh, we're also bringing it smooth around here and doing a few other little things with it. We're going to be putting a lot of trees in, so that's why I went with this over the paper clod method that we used in previous pla plaster bandage hills. Yeah, uh, there's a couple of other techniques that I'll show you as we go along. So, the next job I need to do is essentially get my polystyrene cut and the hill shaped. And I'm going to do, I'm going to build the hill without actually gluing it down on the base, yeah? And the reason for this is it helps me with putting the sides in and sort of working everything out if it isn't fixed down to the base yet. So, we're going to be building a standalone hill out of this, yeah? And then we'll, talk, we'll take it to the next step. So, I'll crack on, eh? See you in a minute. Now, I'm in the process of building up the layers for our flanking hill. And obviously I'm using lots of little layers, and it can be quite challenging to sort of get the layers right, because one of the problems is you're working off a plan that's on your baseboard, and then you've got to sort of cover that plan up, and then remember where it is to build it up. So what I like to do is, once I've got my first board cut, which is that one there, yeah, I get my, my next fresh sheet, place it down, put that board on top, and then I draw round it. And what that does, is it gives me that layer on here. I hope you can see it. I hope you can see the, the green line running along there, guys. Yeah? And what that allows me to do is think, right, okay, it's obviously going to get a little bit smaller. Now, I know I want a path coming down here, so I don't want to make this too big. So, we're probably going to be looking at something along these lines. Yeah, so let's go along there. Yeah? And that's like going to be our next cut. And then once I cut this out, I will use it as a template on the other side to cut the next layer and the next layer, and, you know, up we go. In fact, I might bring that just a little there. Because we can always tailor it back. Okay? Right, I'm going to crack on. So that's all the layers cut out with a minimal of mess. We'll make more mess later, trust me. Uh, as you can see, simple tiered approach, and I've gone for a couple of spurs in it and a bit of a dip. Yeah, which should give us quite a bit of an interesting undulated terrain. Now, the basic brief is this is Green Hill, okay, with a couple of little rocky outcrops that we've got some woodland scenics, uh, pre-painted, pre-cast things to, to try. They'll be coming in another video, guys, when we get to that stage. But, all this is done, next job I've got to do is basically glue these layers together. Okay, but I'm not going to glue it down to the baseboard just yet because I need to work on it and get the battening in place. There's a couple of little other bits of housekeeping I've got to do with regards to cutting, etc. Yeah, but we'll cover that when we get to that stage. So I'm going to glue this now. My glue of choice is PVA. Yeah, uh, there's no point using hot glue on expanded polystyrene. It just melts it too quickly. You won't get a joint. Yeah, so go for thin lines of PVA. Uh, 
a bit of compression, it'll do absolutely fine, it'll dry, and while that's drying, I'm going to work, work on the hill for this board. Okay guys, so, see you in a minute. So guys, this is all dry now, and it's ready to have all these rough edges smoothed out. Now, my uh, tool of choice for this is a simple wire brush. And all I'm going to be doing is simply coming along, and taking away those edges just like that. Now, obviously, it's going to be very messy. I'm in the kitchen. It's polystyrene. What could possibly go wrong, eh? <laughs> right, anyway, guys, I'm going to crack on. I'm going to smooth all this out, ready for our plaster banching. And we'll come back once we've got it a bit smoother, yeah? See you then, guys. So we've finished attacking the polystyrene, and it's got a far more organic look to it now. So if I do that, you can sort of see, yeah, how it's all smooth. I've got rid of all the steps. Yeah, I've blended these in. I've got myself a nice little dip, sort of rolling hill. I might clip that back a bit more, actually. Yeah, and also on this bit here, I've narrowed a little path through the woods that we're going to be putting on. Now, there's still a little bit more to do on this before I'm ready to mount on the board. I've got to just do this corner piece, and then we'll be looking at actually how to put the sides on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crack on, do the corner piece. I'm also working on the other side at the same time. So once I've got that done, we'll come back and we'll put the sides on. Okay, so I'll see you shortly, guys. The hill's all completely sculpted now, I've got the little extra bit and it's time to start marking up the sides. Now to border the back and the sides of this, I'm using 3mm MDF, okay, and so what I've got is I've got a sheet of 3mm MDF here and as you can see I've got a green line, so basically I've just lined it up at the back of the build, yeah, and then drawn a line along the profile. And what this will allow me to do is to cut this piece out which will be the perfect backing piece to this. Okay, so that's my next aim. I've also got to do one on the other side as well, so I'm going to do that, and we'll come back when I've got them cut and we're ready to sort of glue an attachment, all that sort of stuff. So, let's make some more mess, eh? Right, I've cut those out now, and we've got one for the side here that will sit just there, yeah, and provide the side for this flank, yeah, and then we've got a longer one along here that's going to come at the back and fits there. Yeah, so my next job is to actually secure these in place. And if I just slide that out very quickly, yeah, you can sort of see the shape, the box shape. Now, uh, the battle plan is I'm going to run a little bit of hot glue on here, basically stick it to there, then tack them in with nails, with little tacks. Okay, and then when it comes to where the two backboards actually meet, I've got some 10 mil, what's called dowling. And basically I'm going to cut a length, place it in the corner, and use that to stick them to, okay? And I'm, I'm not going to tack into this, I'll just use PVA, but I'm going to secure it, it'll be perfectly fine, because at the end of the day, it's going to be glued up against this as well, so it's going to be really solid once it's done. Yeah, so there's no need to sort of tack into that. Yeah, but I do want to tack into the sides. So that's my next job. Okay, I'll come back to you once that's done, and then we'll do the finishing touches on the polystyrene mound, ready for covering it in plaster bandage, and we'll almost be there. Right, guys, I better get tacking. Okay, that's done now. These have been tacked on and glued. Yeah, we've got our batten in place, held by C clamps, and then I've run some PVA just along these edges. So it's all ready to go. It's ready to have the polystyrene fitted, but I'm not going to do that just yet because I really want this to be dry. Yeah, now, the reason why I'm sort of putting in the sides in first, yeah, is it's easier for me to make adjustments to the hill, yeah, as in getting it flush and flat and, and sort of working out anywhere where it might be sticking out a little, yeah, and the reason I'm leaning over is it's here. <laughs> Yeah, so for example, yeah, if there's a little bit that's sticking out somewhere, yeah, if I tried to do it in one go or I've got this sort of against the flat and I was trying to put the batons up against it, I'd have problems. This allows me to just keep adjusting this until it fits nicely in there. Now, I am going to have to do a few slight adjustments to this. Now, one of them is I'm going to have to trim this little corner, yeah, and that's to make room for the baton. And then I'm also just going to come along with this, this edge of the profile, I'm just going to trim back just slightly, yeah, and that's something to do with the plaster bandaging, so I'll show you that when we get to it. But, the next stage is just to finish the other one, yeah, then relax for the evening until I come back and crack on in the morning. Yeah, so, 
There we have it, there's the sides on guys. Uh, quick sort of point to note while I've got it in this style. If this is obviously fixed to a baseboard so I've tapped it to the side. If you were fixing it to say a, a standard base, then what I'd do is I'd run the batons along the edge of, of the base first. Yeah, glue them in place, let them dry before coming in and attaching your sides. Okay guys, but that's if you're doing it on a freestanding base. Obviously, this is part of the display table. Right, I'm going to crack on with the other board and I'll see you in the morning, guys. ta -da. Okay guys, I was in the process of gluing the boards in place, etc. And I've come across a slight problem. Now the back board's been taped in place, it's got glued really well. Well, actually that's the side board, this is the back board. It's glued really, because it turns around that way. It's, it's glued in really well. Yeah, I'm expecting a lovely join on that. And to be truthful, all I've got to do is just, there's a couple of little points here that I'm going to have to go over with my Dremel and just bevel down a little bit where, you know, I was slightly off when I was contouring or perhaps a bit broken off that. Nothing major at all. Now, I had a bigger issue with this side. Uh, I've obviously miscalculated or there's been slippage and it's dried and there was a, a larger gap. Now, much like with the cork bark hills, yeah, all I've done is use slivers of extruded foam. And the only reason I've used the high density extruded foam here is it's easier to cut. You know, if you've got hot tools or even with a blade, you can just cut this stuff and use this. Yeah, but all I've done is I've used those simply to slide down and act as a physical bridge for my PVA to glue across. Yeah, and the idea is that now this is all taped in, all the glue that's been poured on top of all these little pieces that I've put down. Yeah, it took about five minutes. Yeah, when that's set, it will physically fix this board to this piece. Now, I'm not worried about the gap because I need that gap for when we come, come to do our plaster bandaging. I'll actually have to artificially make that gap on this side. Yeah, so this is actually a bit of an advantage. Yeah, albeit, you know, in, in the wrong way. But, yeah, that's how to deal if you've got with these large display pieces, if you've got gaps between where your board is, you know, or you've got any bowing issues, yeah? Just use little slivers of polystyrene, yeah, as bridges. Right, I need to leave this overnight to dry and then it's plaster bandaging tomorrow, guys. Yeah, and in the meantime, I've got to get cracked on with that lot over there. So, I'll see you in the morning. So guys, the watch the sides are all dry and I'm already watch onto the process of covering this down with plaster bandage. Now I could use uh, scenic cloths. The only difference between uh, plaster bandage and scenic cloths is that scenic cloth has a far watch it. Plaster bandage is just basically bandage impregnated with dry plaster that you wet and then it, it conforms to the shape. It's used with plaster casts. The only difference between that and scenic cloth is that scenic cloth is a far finer mesh and so you don't get as many of these holes, in fact you don't get any holes. But the big difference is cost, I mean it costs a fortune compared to plaster bandage. Whereas I don't mind just filling these holes and going over them with a bit of filler. Now I'm working from the top, I'm dropping down the excess edges into my groove that I've cut into it and then when it's all dry I'll come back and you know we'll put filler in this and just clean up these edges a bit with filler. So I'm progressively working down, one coat should be enough once it's all hard. Above all, you should be able to see immediately why I went with polystyrene rather than the paper clods for the substructure of this big hill. Yeah, typically in the railway community they go for paper clods. Yeah, I wanted, because it's a relatively smaller hill and I wanted to be able to control the contours. Yeah, and it's allowed me to do it perfectly. You know, I've got exactly the contours I wanted on it. Yeah, so I'm quite chuffed with that. Now, I'm going to crack on, do the rest of this. And then once it's dry, we'll come back, we'll fill up these edges, and pretty much the display hill is done. So, I'll see you then, guys. So there we have it, guys. Uh, it's dry now, but I'm going to leave it for another day. All the plaster bandaging has been done, uh, all the fillering has been done, but I've got to come back to it, because if you look very carefully, you can still see a couple of the seams of where we've overlapped our plastic band plaster bandage. Yeah, and I just wanted to fully cure and fully dry before I come back in and just smooth over those again and also touch up a few little places. But I'm going to be doing that as part of a different process of flocking and putting trees in and cliff faces that I'm saving for a future video. Yeah, it'll be coming soon because it's the next step, but you know, it's a separate video to actually building the large display hill. So, this is it. This is how you build large display hills. And these techniques will go for hills from this big to huge ones, absolutely huge ones. 
Uh, as always guys, yeah, I hope you liked it, I hope you found this useful, yeah, I hope you use it. If you've got any questions, yeah, throw them in the comments. If you've got any, anything you'd like to add, any tips, if you've got any experiences or any other suggestions on how to do it, you know, throw those in the comments. I'm always after learning guys. Obviously like it if you like it, you know, share it if you know someone who, who's interested. As always, yeah, if you want to really do like this sort of stuff and you want to give me a hand, yeah, yeah, check out the Patreon link guys, it really does help. Yeah, but that's enough on that. In the meantime, I've got to put cliff faces, trees, and all sorts of things on this wonderful beast, as well as finishing off the others and getting probably the biggest board I've ever made built. So guys, playing more tutorials, we are back in the swing of things. Yeah, I'll see you soon. In fact, I'll see you Sunday night, 9 o'clock. Catch you later, guys. Ta-da!